Are you ready, buddy? Are you ready? Is really ready to catch fish. What is going on, guys? Today we are back with another video. Hopefully, we're back with another video, anyways. And uh, look at this day. It's kind of a big, huge front came through rolling this morning. And uh, we sat at the boat landing for about an hour waiting for it to pass. Ton of rain, um, kind of heavy winds, lightning, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I don't know if today's gonna be one of those days where this is just gonna all burn off and it's gonna get hot and humid here in 45 minutes. I have no idea. But we're on a lake that I've been on a couple times in the last month now. Uh, I've been spending so much time in Minnesota. I haven't really feel like we haven't filmed much in Wisconsin anyways. Um, I've been home for about three days in the last two weeks. And uh, yeah, today we're up here in Northern Wisconsin and we're hopefully gonna catch some walleyes. I got 97 rods in the boat right now, pretty much. Uh, just a mountain of Elliott spinning rods and a mountain of trolling rods, lead core rods. We got everything with. And uh, we're gonna start out doing what we did. Um, and the last time I was out here, which is trolling some spinners out in the basin. And uh, what I really like to go into today is kind of that, that deep water transition and really what we're looking for a lot this time of year when we're keying in on these fish. Because it's one of those times of year where looking at the map alone does a lot of times not tell you where the fish are. You know, in the spring, yeah, you can pick out that large shallow flat, that, you know, that good looking point in shallow water, that good looking hump in shallow water, and kind of find fish pretty easily generally that way. This time of year, the map doesn't do a whole lot of good for you. Most of it is honestly driving around on some of these deeper areas where it transitions out in the softer basin and finding fish that way. And a lot of times your screenshots um, might not be like 20 fish all wadded up. It might be like fish here, fish here, fish over here. So that's kind of what we're hopefully gonna go in today as long as they bite. Um, weather and walleyes, you know, roll the dice. Who cares, right? It's all just, who knows? But um, these post frontal things generally um, as long as I can keep like a little bit of the front like this, it's generally good. When it gets really hot, post frontal, flat, calm, sunny, that just that 180 swing normally I do worse. But we're gonna put the troll motor down. And uh, Surly, are you gonna put the troll motor down? Okay, come on, I'll put the troll motor down. And uh, we'll get the encoded down. And uh, hopefully show you guys some hummingbird screenshots today and how we're finding some deep water transitions. And hopefully catch some walleyes, stay tuned. Right there. Feels good too. I was actually just taking a screenshot of what this spot looks like. And uh, we hooked up right as I was doing it. Came into just a perfect little deep water transition. This is a stud. This is gonna be a good fish. I'm just gonna kind of slow us down a little bit here. This is a good one for sure here. Unless it's a giant bass or a pike, you'll catch a little bit of everything in these areas. This time of year. Wow, dude, does this feel heavy. This feels unbelievably heavy for a fish in Northern Wisconsin. We got them on the long 11 footer here, which is normally a rod they don't come off of very often. It's kind of a, uh, not a great one by yourself with planer boards but we got them we got them for sure here all right surly boy we did it we got our first bite of the day here and that that summer heat or that summer is this a huge bass what is this i don't know dude it looked really wide when it was out there this little summer storm kind of, I can tell it's gonna blow off and get hot today just like immediately. It's gonna be on another one of these hot, humid summer kind of days here. Oh, we're all messed up on the light. There we go. All right. Oh, it is just a tank of a smallmouth. Oh, that is not at all what we were expecting to catch on that spot. But like I said, a little bit of everything lives out here this time of year. That's pretty deep for a bass to be. There we 
go right in the corner of the mouth and to the point everything bait fish smallmouth pike walleyes everything lives out on these deep transition lines this time of year a lot of times that's where the feed's at i'll let that guy go and hopefully get the correct species next time No way, this is ridiculous. <laughs> As I was letting it out, that is crazy. I literally went to clip the board on and got picked up. What in the heck is that? <laughs> the bottom bouncer had to be pretty much just laying on the bottom of the lake, I would assume. That is bizarre. Well, I'm assuming this isn't bass, but kind of fighting weird like a bass what the heck is going on here got to do a little misdirection here there we go now we're going the right way here I almost just want to like horse this in because I feel like it's a bass I don't really care that much but at the same time like if this is a walleye that's another huge smallmouth. What the heck is that? This is bizarre. To have these fish biting like this. The other day I did this, I literally did not catch a single smallmouth. And now right away we got two big smallmouth. Kind of weird. And that one was just a strange interaction the whole thing, the whole way through. There we go. Sharp shooting them with bottom bouncers, I guess, right? We'll let that guy go. All right, on to the walleyes. We need the next fish to be a walleye. Fish on right there on the down rod. Just let the two big smallies go. And I'm inclined to say this one's a walleye. Obviously we're just around like the massive amount of, of feeding fish in this lake. Life takes place on these hard bottom to soft bottom transitions out in the basin this time of year. It's just kind of the same story on a lot of, a lot of the lakes you're gonna go. The depth that with that transitions at might change quite a bit. Oh, and we got the right kind of fish on this time. That makes me a happy guy. That makes me happy. Nice walleye here too. Well, so far we've been fishing for like 10 minutes. I gotta reel in some line. I don't know what I'm doing here. So far we've been fishing for like 10 minutes and it's been nonstop reeling in fish. This is a really nice walleye here. Really nice fish. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Oh yeah, we got him. <laughs> now we're talking, now we got the right kind of fish going on. There we go. Pulling some butterfly rigs out here on these transitions. And there's just wads of wads of fish down there. There we go. And, oh, settle down buddy, we're gonna let you go. Catch and release, very, very important. Come here buddy. We're all tangled up in the line. There we go, look at that. Beautiful, thick, healthy Northern Wisconsin walleye to get things going right there. That's what I'm talking about. Couple tank smallies, nice walleye to get things going. I am not complaining about this so far, considering we've been out here for about 10, 15 minutes. Let's let you go, buddy. Back to the depths. Catch and release, oh my gosh, right there. Oh, we lost that one. All right, things are getting intense though. It's going down. Things are happening for sure. Right there, hooked oh, up. <laughs> Man, I swear to say, it's like, every time I take a screenshot of a transition, I get bit. And I just took another really good one. 
right there. And that was just a massive, massive mob of fish. A little hard bottom spot out in kind of a big soft bottom basin. Actually, the first has been a little bit since I talked to you guys. The first spot I fished just completely, completely dried up. What do we got here? What do we got? Oh, we just got a nice little keeper sized walleye here. Got to drive the boat in the wind and grab the little guy. Nice little 16 incher there. And that was just kind of a classic mob of fish that are probably all about the exact same size. A little slow death, a little purple blade. And there we go, getting it done. A little bit smaller one, but fish of all sizes use this kind of big transition area. That's just a pretty perky little northern Wisconsin walleye right there. We'll let him go. And that was just a massive mob of fish. I would not be surprised if another rod, rod went off very shortly here. Well, I might kind of have to go to stacking rods and just kind of run these seams a little bit tighter. It seems like a lot of these fish are just glued down into these areas. And uh, by spreading lines, I'm almost, I feel like kind of hurting myself sometimes. But we'll get set back up, hopefully catch another one. All right, so these deep transition areas, what are we really looking for? Well, you kind of start out generally looking for massive pieces of structure that dump out into the basin. And generally for the most part, what I'm looking for is kind of a lot of that depth range that's around 30 feet of water. And generally wherever we have a lot of these long 30 foot, 33, 35, 28 foot flats, um, generally they're soft bottom. Generally these are soft bottom areas, a lot of mud, a lot of silty kind of bottom composition. And generally what I'm looking for is like I said, some really big piece of structure that slowly goes down and tapers into that. And a lot of times that's where you get this hard to soft bottom transition happening. So we could throw some screenshots of some spots that might look something like this right here. You can see this is all kind of real flat out here and it comes off this large flat. This would be like an area where I'd look for one of these transitions. We'll kind of throw up another one right here. Here's kind of a real complex area area that, that drifts out into the basin, um, into one of these large flats. And a lot of times right at this interchange, and your hard bottom is always structure. So like you can imagine the brake lines coming down, coming down, you get a hump here, knob here, and then it meets that basin and it gets real flat there at 28, 30 feet of water. That is your transition, that hard bottom break to that soft bottom flat piece. And that is a lot of times, especially late in the summer and all the way up kind of till turnover, for whatever reason these fish love these kind of areas on a lot of different lakes you're going to fish and uh, this is just an absolute hot spot now it's more difficult to generally um you know just look at a map and point out like there 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 because technically there's a hard to soft bottom transition that runs around the entire lake most of the time what we're looking for is really big pieces of structure that taper out into the basin and then right where they meet that basin is a lot of times where we can expect to see those fish and it does absolutely take a lot of driving around to find those fish and you know recognize what these spots look like on your sonar side imaging and down imaging is going to go a long ways and in a little bit here we're going to talk about what these spots look like what fish look like and how you guys can come out and find a lot of these hard to soft bottom transitions using your side imaging down imaging sonar things like that right there just let that last one go came back into some more fish and there we go we are hooked up on another one couldn't even rebate the last one yet that is how we like it right there. And uh, since this storm blown through, the bite's been it's like right as it passed. I caught just a whole bunch of fish, like boom, boom, boom. And then it was just kind of a lull for a little while. And now it's like things have kind of stabilized out. And I don't keep any kind of like weather journal, like hey, you know, this kind of weather, that's going on, this kind of weather, this is going on. Because ultimately you're just fishing anyways, right? I mean, how how scientific do you want to make it? Oh yeah, nice walleye. Nice walleye. We're gonna fold the rod in so I can get closer to him. <laughs> Little tip with the telescopic rods. Look at that guy just darting around in the clear water. Too awesome. Come here, buddy. Yep, there we go, getting it done. Deep transitions loaded with fish this time of year. And really a lot of them will stay like this all the way up to turnover. Um, and that's just kind of the way it is in my opinion. A lot of lakes fish very similar to this. Um, you know, where you get these dog days of summer, fish are kind of in one area, then towards the end of those dog days, fish kind of move out for a lot of these transitions. And a lot of times 
right till turnover they'll sit in a lot of these same spots just another quality quality fish there i love absolutely love how gold these fish are up in northern wisconsin i've been many places and caught many larger walleyes than i do in northern wisconsin but these clear inland lakes are just they have uh, it's just my thing it's just what i really like to do and uh it, it can be difficult fishing but it's always always rewarding when you catch them and that's probably why i still live where i live for now anyways <laughs> All right, now when we're looking for these fish, obviously 2D and down imaging are gonna pick those fish up um, as well as side imaging. But the main thing that we wanna do is we wanna be good at finding this transition, right? And a lot of times it's, like you say, it's a hard to soft and you can side imaging and down imaging and sonar are gonna pick up um, as, a, as a much darker color. Well, so, sonar is a little bit different, but your side imaging and down imaging will show a much darker tan color um, or mo much more black in it when you're in a soft bottom. So we'll kind of throw up a screenshot right here. Now you can see this soft bottom is kind of right here it's much darker color you can see the hard bottom looks something like this right here and that interchange sometimes it'll be a very sharp interchange sometimes it'll be a slower interchange generally as that that you know kind of soft bottom muddy area is approaching structure right when it hits structure right before it hits structure it's going to get real hard then you'll have a real abrupt change and fish definitely seem to like that Anytime you have a real hard bottom piece of structure that can just kind of fizzles out into the basin and turns into straight mud, fish will absolutely love that interchange this time of year. Now, when we're looking at fish, we'll kind of show you some screenshots here. Like here you can see a hard to soft bottom line and just a ton of fish sitting on this piece right here. On side imaging, you're looking for something that looks like this right here. You can see some of these fish scattered off to the side, um, actually in some of that soft bottom right next to the hard bottom stuff. And uh, we'll just kind of throw up a, a different mirage of screenshots here. The main thing is obviously being able to find that soft bottom to hard bottom transition on kind of as a large piece of structure heads out into the basin. And then number two, see those fish. You know, you're fishing generally pretty, this is these areas are generally pretty flat, so side imaging works very good. There's generally not a lot of rock here, and uh, you know, running that side imaging can key in on where those fish are, where that hard to soft bottom line is. Um, and then, you know, generally the next thing I'll do is just start dropping waypoints on stuff, so I can either come back and connect the dots and troll that area real good, or so I can jig it, or really no matter what I'm going to do. There's a number of different ways you can target these fish. Today we're pulling um, crawlers, but uh, like I said, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do. So hopefully this little piece kind of showed you guys what that hard to soft bottom line looks looks like and uh, what fish are going to look like when relating to it and a lot of times not uncommon to just see mountains of fish in these areas from right now kind of all the way up to turnover so um, hopefully this was a helpful little segment on kind of you know what these areas are going to look like Hooked up right there. That's looking decent. Nicely done. Putting it together. It always feels good when you know the day throws you a curveball and you kind of put it together. Always feels good. Staying down all right, surly boy. You got out of your captain's chair. Go to your back to your captain's chair. There you go. We're out here in 27 feet of water, just fishing this deep, deep line here. And they're undoubtedly out here. You could probably even, oh, it's a nice walleye. A real nice walleye here. You could probably even sharpshoot these fish with the hyper rattle or something. Oh, I just love that in clear water so much. <laughs> Look at that guy, head down, head down, head down. Don't get in my other line. And try to bring you up and over. Oh, that's scary. That's scary. All right, sir, we got to get the net, buddy. We got to get the net now. Got to get the net. Here, big girl. I'm going to fold the rod down. Keep their head under the water. It's very tempting to, like, pull the fish up to you. The second that fish hits the surface or doesn't even hit the surface. There we go. And that is the size we are after right there. That is just a super, super nice late summer northern Wisconsin walleye right there. Big purple thumper Colorado blade on this one. Slow death and about half, three quarters of a crawler. Kind of whatever amount of crawler looks, looks necessary. What is going on here? Is he off? Is he on? 
he's got the hook going through the corner of his mouth and then out the other side we're gonna have to do some work here the old through the mouth trick happens more than you think it would man to tell you the truth i don't even know what's going on here i'm just gonna i think the hook is literally coming out of his gill <laughs> he's not hooked anymore i'm just gonna cut the uh cut the hook off here real quick and break the spinner rig because i don't want to have this guy out of the water for too long there we go i'm gonna get my blade out of his mouth there we go <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful northern Wisconsin walleye right there. Sun angle is totally incorrect, but that's a nice one. Look at that mouth. Let's let that guy go. Awesome, awesome, awesome fish right there. Release them. Super strong. Keep their head in the direction in which you're moving. There he goes. Straight down. That is what I'm talking about. Feels good, and that is the exact quality of fish that we're after out here. Well, you know, a lot of lakes in northern Wisconsin, you see a lot of those bigger end fish are like 24-ish right in there. Anytime we're catching them like that, I'm happy. All right, well, that is gonna do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this one. Um, just a quick little outing, kind of highlighting, you know, kind of a super, super productive area this time of year. Hard to south bottom transitions hold fish everywhere. And a lot of times they hold just a lot of different kinds of fish too, depending on what body of water you're in. But uh, we'll definitely be fishing a whole bunch of this stuff. And at least this will give some context as we're fishing and we're saying, oh, it's a hard to south bottom line. Um, kind of some of you guys will get the idea. And there's just a ton of fish that are gonna be moving into these areas or already in these areas. And uh, as the season goes on all the way to turnover we're going to be fishing in a bunch of these spots so i appreciate you guys watching this video me and surly are going to go home do some editing this afternoon leisurely little afternoon edit today not a 2 a.m edit like most of them are um, but i appreciate you guys watching if you're not yet please subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more content we appreciate appreciate all the uh, clothing sales they're all linked down in the description of this video so thank you guys for watching stay tuned for more content we'll see you next time